Yo, what's up guys? We are back with the practice walkthrough. So before we head on back to our Dragon Peak, I do want to point something out. We are going to want to make sure that we do have arrows. So at least 99 of two types. And I would also recommend taking the time now. We are going to want two specific types of, types of bolts in the future. We're going to want 99 heavy bolts and at least 30 exploding bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to buy 24 exploding bolts just to get up to that 30 and then I'm just going to yeah I'm just going I'm going to buy 92 92 heavy bolts just so we have them go ahead and do that and then like I said make sure you go ahead and buy all the standard and wood arrows that you can it's also not a terrible time to go ahead and buy things like large arrows and feather arrows they can be helpful just to have on you hmm which one? Well, I, I I will buy. I'll buy 83 large arrows. Just to have them on me. Good to know. But from here, we are going to go ahead and head on back to the Drankin Mausoleum. I do also want to make note about Orbex Ashes that we obviously gave to the Shrine Maiden. You can give those to Yuria. And she will give you the Morion Blade, which is totally useful as a weapon. But it amps up your damage quite a bit I think if your health is in a specific range but it will if like you ever see somebody doing a one-shot build they are probably using that blade just to hold an offhand and then they're doing a different attack in their right hand I think it's only useful for a one-shot build so I never use it but just wanted to make you aware of the fact that you can complete that quest line for Yuria if you just decide to use Orbex Ashes, which is fine because obviously Orbex Ashes would open up the Shrine Maiden's inventory to everything that he sold, but we bought everything he had, so, you know, there was no reason not to give it to Yuria, I just didn't do it. Anyway, we are going to come in here. Don't try to just, like, sprint up the stairs and bypass this area. You want that guy to start summoning, then you can run up the stairs and go kill the summoner. Just something to be aware of. I'm gonna do a dead sprint right here, make sure all that dark magic crashes away. And we're gonna, as you can see, the summoner has a whip. I think the summoner can drop the whip as well. Definitely drops the staff. Okay. So we did already grab all of the items that are over here. I'm, I'm gonna kill this guy. Hello, friend. Get your lack of hyper armor out of here. Oof. Suppose I don't have enough hyper armor to eat your hits anyway. Talking all sorts of crap. But yeah, we did get all of these items. So. Yeah. We are good for in here. And it is time to progress. So this is the path of progression. Make sure you come to this. You can grab this item through the gate. Dragon Slayer Spear. So that is Ornstein. Uh, that's Ornstein's Spear from Dark Souls 1. Super, it does like crazy damage if you catch somebody with the full weapon art. But there is a dragon on the left that's going to hit us with our head, but we're going to poison through it. Okay, so he's dead. You want to be very careful. Take these guys out one at a time right here. So come up first to this guy. As I said before, you can repost them, and I really enjoy doing it. I'm going to keep the life ring on. You don't rush this guy, you want him to come to you. Okay. Now you want to come out and one guy's gonna start chasing you. Perseverance through him. Come out a little further and a second guy's gonna come for you. Here he is. You can also just use a shield, but I use my body along with perseverance. You're gonna come over here and drop that this guy. Okay. I am going to heal on up because we're about to fight a big boy. Here is the big boy. Hello, big boy. Roll past. First, we're going to do that. And he falls off the edge. Extremely convenient, and I really appreciate him doing that for the recording. So make sure to come up this ladder for a ring. here 
then you want to come this way and just drop on down you're gonna cross the bridge and across the bridge we have a crystal lizard this crystal lizard does like to escape particularly from me so I get full stamina and no don't you do it don't you do it no 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 get back here there we go got him get you the three twinkling from him and come up here for your chest get three titanite scales then we have two more rock turtles I've already talked to we found the one but now we have two don't try to run past these guys they will just knock you off and you will die in a very humiliated fashion I promise I, I've <laughs> I've tried to do it and these guys have killed me more than any non-boss enemy in this area but oof oof perseverance can counter all of their attacks perseverance slam have one more guy off on to the right Come on, buddy. And I just like to fight them in here because they can't knock me off of anything in here. Yeah, how do you like them apples? Okay. Now, it's time for a dragon to come flying in. And that's why I said make sure to go ahead and buy arrows and crossbow bolts. We're going to save our bolts. Instead, we're going to use our dragon rider bow because it will let us kill the dragon a little bit faster. Other than that, I am going to want FP coming up, but anyway, get your bow on out. You're going to want to run up here, and a dragon's going to land. Ignore the dragon, come back to this window, grab the soul item, and then walk through the window. He's going to land, and he's going to fly away. Okay. After he flies away, he's just going to go land up on this tower. You can actually not hurt him while he's on that tower. So you have to just ignore him for now. And instead, we're going to run out here. And he's going to come and land again. That should be good. Now that he's landed a second time, he ain't going nowhere. So just come on here. You can just stand right about here. And you are just going to line your point all up. There we go. Nope, that's... Hmm. Oh, wait a second. What arrows am I using? Oh, uh, wood arrows? No, that's why I bought large arrows. Okay. Yeah, 106. Much better. You can also use feather arrows, get a little bit beefier damage. But once they're lined up, every arrow should hit. If you want to do this as fast as possible, I'm just going to explain stamina efficiency. So stamina efficiency is basically the theory that you never bottom out your stamina because there's an additional pause before it starts to refill if it's all the way bottomed out. And you don't waste it by letting it get all the way full because you know it, it wastes it because for the second that it's full, you're not accruing any additional stamina. So that's just stamina efficiency. Typically you only see people talk about it who are speedrunners. But I mean, if you were sit, if you're stuck right here, plinking a dragon, ridiculously, then it comes into play in terms of how long it takes. And realistically, Dark Souls Three is a game of stamina efficiency. So you can actually go kill this guy in terms of melee. It's a little bit tough, and if you're by yourself there's a very real chance that you're going to die you can totally do it though I just think this is easier it's kind of an annoying enemy just to you know do all of this work trying to kill that guy and he doesn't even drop that many souls but it is worth cheesing him at the very least because he drops I think six chunks three twinkling and three uh, titanite scales so worth killing him not worth the fight in my opinion but yeah, fe oh, and I messed up my efficiency, but feather arrows are the best way to kill him, I think. Unless, he might be weak to lightning, so you could use lightning arrows. Arrows to his head do more damage, just like something to be aware of. It's just that it's kind of hard to get the angle to hit him on the head. Also, if you're showing yourself, like, too big in the window, he can start breathing fire into this room. 
He's only done it like once to me. And every time I stand here and do exactly what I'm doing, I get off without any problem. That was just me. I fully recovered my FP. And so I'm just going to let passive regen do work while I'm stuck standing here. But it'll be pretty easy to, after we kill this guy, get to the next bonfire and totally be done with this portion of the area and be ready to go into the next one in the episode after. We will get a pretty cool dex weapon in this episode, right after the dragon, Ricard's rapier, which is super fun, but there's an army of turtles between us and that, which is something to be aware of. We're finally getting towards the end of this. You know, anything that's boring like this is absolutely brutal for me right now, because this is my first walkthrough, so I have another profile where I just go through the area and take notes on it the day or two before I record. And so, but because it's the weekend, I did that last night. And so I'm just, I did this last night now and I vividly remember it. He is dead. So we get six chunks, three Titanite scales, and three Twinkling. So very, very cool. Go ahead and get our Black Knight Sword back. That is why you always want to have arrows on you for situations like that. So, time for the army of turtles. Make sure you have full stamina so you can run away. Don't just try to run past them. You totally can and totally survive, but there's just it's kind of high risk and there's no reason to risk 50,000 souls on just like this. Just kill them normally. Just guide them down one at a time. Okay, they're dead. <laughs> Sorry, that one is dead. We have three more. Time for number two. Come on, number two. Ah! Full on sprint straight down here. Oh, not, not block. No. I want to. Got number two. And they do drop scales, as you could just see right there. So, very, very cool. This is like, if you wanted to grind scales for some reason, you could do that with these enemies. You don't need to. We're going to be able to buy them in just a bit. But I think that based on the drop rate, it will drop, oh no. It's probably more efficient to actually kill these guys than to try to grind souls to buy them. So I guess maybe it would make sense if you're just trying to grind for enemies. I typically, I don't have enough weapons that need scales to be that concerned about grinding them. Anyway, here comes the last one. We're just gonna come over here. Okay, one, two, roll. You can't just do one, two, roll. And we get another one. So killing those four got us two Titanites. And if you're using things like the gold serpent ring, covenant, covenous, covetous gold serpent ring, and the Crystal Sage's rapier, then you can really get uh, quite a few drops. Anyway, so just through this door is the other summoner. We're going to run past the summon, and then we're going to kill it. Then we'll kill the summon. So here we go. Thinking speedy thoughts. So, just past this guy. Okay, so that thing is dead. Here comes the summon. A very naked Ricard. I like to fight him back here. Perseverance. Blue is right here, and because he is naked, he just dies in four hits. So, a point down for you, sir. You should wear armor next time. So we got Ricard's rape here. Dark Souls 1, he does wear armor, so I don't know. Maybe a different guy. Anyway, this is the bell. This starts the boss fight, for the love of God. Do not pull it. 
there's an item down there which we will get in the next episode. Or no, well, we will get it in. No, we will get it in the next episode because we're going to do Havel first. Anyway, light the bonfire, go ahead and rest. So do not ring that bell. We like I'm, I'm dead serious. Do not, for the love of God, do not ring that bell. It will totally mess up everything you want to do. But come back to the summoner, and this time, hold on. Oh, that was a. That was a note. This time, instead of fighting it, we are running straight up and dropping down. There is a turtle right here. We're going to poop the turtle off the ledge. Bye, turtle. We are going to open this chest. Get our twinkling, and then at the top of these stairs is a havel. So, because it's a havel, you can do two things. One, you can put on the hornet ring. And two, you can swap out something like the ring of favor, which I think that we can actually get away of, away with. And I think the night slayer ring is what I was thinking of putting on. Here we go. Yeah, and then I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna swap these gauntlets with the Fram gauntlets, which are almost as good. And now we can bust Havel's posture, and more importantly, we can get off the super sweet uh, reposts. So I'm going to really try to do that. To the left of Havel, so Havel's right here in front of a dead dragon. To the left of him is a slab. So go ahead, grab the slab. He is going to burn through his stamina attacking us. Don't trade with him. If he gets off a hit, he's going to get off two hits. That's how his weapon works. Oof. Oof. There we go. And boom! Drop him. Oh, I love it quite a lot of fun doing that. Nope, no, no, no. Oh, he got off two hits again. He obviously does way more damage than us, so. Roll. Roll. And another one. If we had a Chaos Dagger, maybe not Chaos Dagger on this build, if we just had a dagger, we could really do some damage. Oh, I didn't expect that. Give us a backstab. There we go. Got a nice backstab off. I'm just trying to crit the world right here. And another one. But he has all the defense in the world as long as that stone is on there. So this is technically phase two. I think phase three is when... So he can't run right now. Oof. Oh, he went for five. Oh my god. Roll. Oh, we messed it up. Oh no. No, no. No. We don't want to do that. Anyway, he's going to die in the next hit. Try to make it a backstab. Yep. Killed him with a backstab. And what's up, dude? What's up? Anyway, you get the Dragon Tooth and Havel's Great Shield, strength weapons. Now that we have done that, we are going to descend the ladder. And let me look at my notes real quick. So we killed Havel. And we're going to go grab an item real quick. And then we're going to go grab Havel's armor. We're going to ignore the enemies, however. So drop off to the left. Roll on down. We want the item that is back here. So where those enemies are, that is called the gauntlet. We do not want to run the gauntlet right now. We will do that in the next episode. But we're just going to grab his armor so that we don't forget to do it. It's very, very easy to never grab Havel's armor. It's just easy to forget to do it, because it's back in an early game area that we've already cleared. Anyway, we are going to travel to the Wolf of Farron, Old Wolf of Farron. 
And he is back where we got Havel's ring. His armor's here now, which makes me think that Havel died to that thing. Which is ridiculous, because how could that thing kill Havel? Havel could absolutely tank through that sucker. But that's not actually Havel, I think. Uh, that's just somebody rocking all Havel gear. But who knows, maybe it is the true Havel. It shouldn't be the true Havel. True Havel really hated dragons, like, really hated. To the point that he got mad at Gwyn for being friends with, um, Sif. Not Sif. The Scaleless. Sil the Scaleless? Crap, what is that dude's name? I don't remember. Anyway, we can go ahead, throw back our Black Iron, throw our Black Iron Gauntlets. Are they better? I'm gonna keep my Black Iron Gauntlets on. We will opt and I'm optimize our armor for the next boss fight. But, as you can see, there's the item, and that item belongs to Havel. That's Havel's stuff. Anyway, yeah, I'm just going to run on back. Uh, screw it. Let's take the... Let's take advantage of this opportunity of having an awkwardly long journey. And we're just going to go back to Firelink. We're going to get a level. Yeah. So we will run the gauntlet in the next episode and then finish up Hawkwood's questline. So we're going to come over here. Level on up. Get up to level 88. So we'll do that by getting strength to 30. At this point, we're getting really good scaling. So just, just so like anybody who's questioning my leveling, is it gets us really consistent health growth and uh, weapon scaling throughout the game. And that's why I just do all four together. You could just do health, stamina up to 35, and then worry about weapon scaling. It's totally fine to do that. I just did not, I, I would rather have a consistent growth to how much damage I'm doing and how much health I have as the game progressively gets more difficult. And I think that's actually better for a new player. I mean, obviously when I make a character, I don't even level up. I just go online and I run through the archives 15, 20 times and it's like, yay. And then I just level from, you know, soul level 70 up to 112 and I'm ready for PVP. But, okay. So this is where we will start the next episode. And we will run the gauntlet. So, yeah, that's going to be the end for this one. Catch you guys next time.